we've watched encryption grow more dominant and now more dominant. Now we have dominant. a situation where the major corporations are not uh, cooperating. Suppose that we had legislation which required two kids. Where this is headed is towards proposals for some kind of stockpile of encryption key. If we're going to continue to preserve our right to free speech in the electronic age, then we need to use tools like encryption. It just makes sense. Hi, I'm Zach Weissmuller for Reason TV, here with Ladar Levison. He is the founder of LavaBit, the email service famously used by Edward Snowden and which he shut down in 2013 after the government requested all the encryption keys to access all the email on his server. We spoke about that uh, about a year ago. At that time, you said that you hoped that the revelations would kind of create a market. Do we have more encryption than we did before? Has a market and a desire for that arisen? Oh, I think it certainly has. Um, I think my biggest problem I have with what's happened in the last year is that security and encryption have become marketing terms. And unfortunately, we're seeing this huge growth in the number of encrypted communication services and encrypted internet services in general. Um, but when you dig into the details, they're not truly secure. How do you drill down and figure out you know, what is real and, and how does the layperson know what is a good encrypted product versus a bad one? You mean without getting a PhD in computer engineering? <laughs> yes, uh, preferably. It's really difficult. And you know, I consider myself to be, I guess I'm gonna use the E word, an expert. And you know, I can't evaluate every product and service that I use, every application that I download off the Play Store. Um, I really have to rely on reputation in a lot of instances. One of your current endeavors is something called the Dark Mail Alliance, mm -hmm. which you're working on with a team of um, other high-profile people in the encryption movement. Uh, one of them is Phil Zimmerman, who created PGP, which is one of the first like, widely adopted methods of encryption. What are you hoping to accomplish with the Dark Mail Alliance? To create a set of protocols that will allow people to build email clients that look and function identically to the way they do today, but under the covers are capable of encrypting that message before it leaves your computer in such a way that only the intended recipient can decrypt it when it reaches the other end. The tricky part, the part we're actually spending a lot of time on right now, refining, is how do we build a client that does that encryption for you is completely innocuous and user-friendly to the novice, but still allows the expert like me to easily go in and verify that the encryption is happening properly and that nothing is going wrong. So when we look at what happened to you and LavaBit, mm -hmm. feds came in and basically asked for the keys to the vault to be able to look at everyone's email. So Are you looking to solve that problem then? My system was the best I could do 10 years ago right. without changing the protocols themselves. I took that like I would take the laws of physics as an immutable constant that I had to work around. So the system I built was focused on protecting the messages while they were in my control, which is why they were in the control of my servers. Mm -hmm. So my system didn't do anything to protect a message before it arrived at LavaBit or after it left. I relied on a internet standard known as Transport Layer Security, or TLS, to create a wrapper, an encrypted wrapper around the connection between my server and my user's desktops. And it was that wrapper that the FBI wanted to peel back. So what I want to do is push the encryption out of the server and onto the user's devices themselves. Right. So that way, the sender would encrypt the message before it even arrived at my server. And it wouldn't be decrypted until it actually arrived at the user's desktop. This is an issue that was raised very recently in a congressional hearing. We cannot break strong encryption. 
the director of the FBI actually was telling companies we need to have a kind of backdoor around the encryption to fight um, cyber terrorism. Well, what Mr. Comey overlooked was that this universal use of encryption has become a requirement as a result of the irresponsible use of surveillance tools by his own organization. If we want to be able to have private conversations, which I feel is fundamentally necessary to a free and fair democracy in order for it to operate, you know, if we're going to continue to preserve our right to free speech in the electronic age, then we need to use tools like encryption. It just makes sense. Why is privacy important to uh, democracy and free speech, in your opinion? Because the mm -hmm. rebuttal that, to that you always hear is, if you have nothing to hide, why do you need to build these you know, brick walls around your conversations? Because how do I get exposed to ideas, to people whose opinions differ from me, if I'm constantly in fear of that association coming back to haunt my business prospects. You know, people who attended a Communist Party meeting once in college because they were curious, all of a sudden were blacklisted and could no longer work in Hollywood. Are you afraid that the bad guys, the terrorists, will use this technology to endanger America? And if that happens, is, are you afraid there's gonna be a huge government pushback against uh, encryption technology? I'm not afraid of the pushback. Um, I am afraid that terrorists will use this technology, certainly. You know, I don't want to see anybody blown up any more than the next person, um, which is why I'm upset that I have to build a mil-spec crypto communication system for the entire planet just to say I love you to a spouse. Another internet freedom issue that gets a lot of attention, especially from online activists, is net neutrality. You've said that you think going through the FCC is misguided. Why? The problem is that we view the internet and access to it as a utility. It shouldn't be viewed as a utility. It should be viewed as a commodity. I want to move us to a system closer to what they have in the United Kingdom where there's a neutral body that maintains the line between the central office and the end user's home, and that any service provider who can run fiber to that central office can offer internet access at whatever speed and price they, they think is appropriate. And it's why for the equivalent of $20, you can get a 100 megabit connection in the United Kingdom. Whereas over here, you have to pay upwards of $100. And you think that's because we it's treat because it as a utility? there's no competition. Oh, okay. And that's the real issue. I mean, utilities, the term itself, refers to a market, an industry, a product, or a service in which, by its very nature, there can't be competition. We've sort of grown up in this world with the cable companies because only one or two companies can run wires to an individual's house. So that aspect of it, the physical aspect of it, is still somewhat of a utility. But the, the service itself, what goes over those wires, what goes through those pipes, that sh needs to be opened up to competition. I want to close with a question about lava bit, mm -hmm. um, which you had to shut down because you didn't want to compromise all of your users' data and just mm -hmm. hand it over to the government. We're looking back a few years at that. Are you still glad that you did it? And how did that interaction with the government affect your outlook? And are things better or worse? So I wouldn't say I'm glad I had to destroy the business that took me 10 years to create. Um, but it's certainly a decision I would make 100 out of 100 times. Because it went against everything I felt was important about how we, we interact with companies. It violated that sacred trust between a service provider and the user. It went against the very foundation of why I started LavaBit in the first place, which was to create the type of email service that I would want to use myself. How has that changed me? I, I find myself becoming more radicalized. I love this country. I, I have trouble seeing myself living in any other. And I will continue to love this country. But what I despise is the job our government is doing. Because I've come to hate the government we have. 
Ladar Levison, thank you very much for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. For Reason TV, I'm Zach Weissmuller.